Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier, and with the anniversary sale coming up tomorrow, I thought it would be cool to discuss four ships to watch below $500. These are the ships at various price points that stand out as being particularly strong in either combat or otherwise a solid performer. The reality is in this video that all of my recommended ships are currently well below $500. You don't need to buy these ships to enjoy the game, but if you choose to support the development, these are those which most see as great. This is part three of a series. If you didn't see part one or two, they're linked up for you right now. Let's begin in no particular order. In this price point, we actually have a very big issue. Most of the game mechanics associated with these ships aren't ready. We can try to choose based on what we know. However, we have to place our trust in the developers like Chris Roberts and Tony Z to produce something that makes sense and is also fun to play. The Endeavor is the Swiss Army Knife of Star Citizen. If modularity had a name, it would be Endeavor. Unlike the Caterpillar, which can be adjusted to fit many roles, the Endeavor can be tailored to a range of tasks. We have some idea about what modules might come out for the Caterpillar, but because the module sets were sold with the Endeavor, we have a clear idea of what it can do. It's a science platform, but it can be used for exploration, fine-tuning ship and personal components, agriculture, and even medical operations. It's also pretty appealing because if you get one for farming, and that gameplay turns out to be lame or uninteresting, you simply reconfigure as a mobile base and carry on. My only word of caution is that the modular ships seem to be a very good value until you go invest in modules. The modules really add to the price, but it's still a cool ship. The BMM has a very colorful history, being one of the older pledges that's never been much more than a picture. It's alien, which usually means better baseline of tech. It's massive and modular. The Banu are known for their trade, and this ship is a mobile bazaar with warehouses, storefronts, and meeting rooms. Like the Endeavour, pledging for a BMM is a bit of an act of trust. There's no guarantee that what you personally think the BMM is will end up being what it is. Even after the price jump, it's a pretty solid proposition. If you want something a little bit more than running cargo, the BMM should become your virtual mobile Costco. The Starfarer is the only ship on this list that's actually flight ready, but it's in the same boat as the others as the mechanics aren't actually defined yet. It's not really modular, but that doesn't matter. It should offer a medium org a steady stream of income. At its core, it's basically a mining ship that can find, collect, process, store, and sell fuel. Its massive bay can carry physical cargo separate from the liquids in the pods. You can also expand its holds by swapping fuel pods for cargo pods. All around, a no-brainer. If an Aquila is your Millennium Falcon, then the Carrick is your Enterprise. I've melted and unmelted every ship in the fleet over the years, but I've always had a Carrick. The idea of a purpose-built, militarized, long-range exploration ship is so universally appealing. Specialized equipment such as sensors and computers for tracking wormholes. A rover garage, a snub hangar, long-range fuel cells, weapons and protection. Workshop, med bay, charting room. The Carrick should offer exactly the type of gameplay that I want out of Star Citizen. The three modules can carry cargo, or like the Caterpillar, they're also planned to tailor your ship for the missions you need to achieve. Last we heard, it's being worked on, and I can't wait to see it in engine. I'll close out with two honorable mentions, and a bunch of dishonorable ones. The Genesis Starliner seems too good to be true, and I feel I'm going to regret not having one. The Polaris also gets a mention. It's a small cap ship that if used properly could really wreck someone's day, or you could just use it to tour the universe. The capital ship gameplay isn't really defined yet, but I do see a Polaris as a less expensive alternative if you really have your heart set on running a very large ship. Now there's nothing specifically bad about these next ships, but they're all in the same boat. They're all one trick ponies locked into very specific gameplay. If you had only one ship, I'd recommend it not be one of these, unless you have a really specific reason why you want it. The Prowler, Dropship only. Reclaimer, Scrap only. Orion, Drilling Rocks only. Crucible, Patching Ships only. Again, nothing specifically bad, just very specific and limiting. And there you go. If you'd like to know how to get LTI on any ship that you buy from the sale, please check out the video I have linked up right now. Do me a favor and stay tuned because I'm far from done. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.